AMD's Zen 5 processors are shaping up to be extremely impressive, with large IPC gains versus their predecessors, but also numerous other tricks that may convince you to upgrade from your AM4 platform. In this video, then, we're going to be discussing AM5, what I've been hearing about it, and even touch on some Zen 6 stuff as well. That is, after this message from the video's sponsor. This video is sponsored by NordVPN, so a big thanks to them for being part of keeping this channel running. With the amount of malware, phishing, and password attacks out there, having a VPN is pretty much mandatory in 2023. NordVPN has over 5,500 servers worldwide, allowing you to browse the internet anonymously and safely with just a single click without compromising on speed, allowing you to browse or even play games without losing out. Some of Nord's features include hiding your IP, securing encryption, threat protection, we'll get to that in a moment, and more. And don't forget, NordVPN has no data logging, meaning that nobody can get your hands on your data or IP address. While safety and anonymous browsing is a big part to use NordVPN, it goes way beyond just the escaping those pesky trackers. They have just launched a brand new feature, Threat Protection. This is a great feature as it allows you to protect your PC from ads, trackers, a malicious website, and scan suspicious files for malware, even when you are not connected to a VPN. And the best part? This feature comes at no additional cost. There are a whole suite of benefits and perks to using NordVPN, one of which of course is browsing content from other countries. If your favourite movie or TV show is geolocked outside of your home country, then NordVPN has you covered. Simply change your country with a single click or tap if you're on mobile, and then all previously hidden content will be yours to enjoy. Indeed, this actually came in super handy for myself over Christmas. While I had to entertain some German guests due to family, their English just wasn't great. So using NordVPN, yep, I do use it in my personal life, I managed to access the German content for them, and I could watch that content myself thanks to English subtitles. Get our exclusive NordVPN deal at NordVPN slash RGT. That's NordVPN slash RGT. You can also, of course, find a link in the description. It's completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Let's start things out by adding some additional context to a video that I made about a week ago concerning the core counts, not just for the Ryzen desktop processors, okay, Granite Ridge, but also the core counts for the CCDs themselves. The gist of it is that AMD will be producing Zen 5 not just on a single process node, but instead two, leveraging both TSMC's 3 and 4 nm For what I'm told, therefore, Zen 5 for desktop, known as Granite Ridge, basically Ryzen CPUs, does indeed feature eight cores per CCD. Essentially the same thing as Zen 4, but the server variants are produced on the 3NM process instead of the 4NM, and these can go up to 16 cores for the dense server variants. Jim over at Adore TV has also confirmed my early report on the same core count per CCD, and honestly, this just makes sense. For what it's worth, though, another source has also told me AMD's Strix Point, which is the successor to Phoenix, leverages different manufacturing processes as well. So the highest variant skew, which is 8 uh, Zen 5 cores, 8 Zen 4D cores, and... Um, well, eight workgroup processors shall be manufactured on the free NM TSMC process, but the lower end parts will only be using the 4NM. AMD have also given us some confirmation regarding their vision for Zen 5. They've stated it's going to support a ground-up redesign, and because they're a very friendly bunch, they've even given us some hints as to what we'll see with this. Enhanced performance and efficiency is a very vague term, because who the hell is going to buy a new generation processor if the performance didn't improve? But more interestingly was a re-pipeline front end and wide issue portion of the slide. AMD will be plonking in integrated AI and ML optimizations too, this is not really surprising given the general movement of the market. Obviously, AMD's Phoenix processors, based on Zen 4, already leverage Zelenix. Frankly, AMD will continue to double down on this strategy with APUs such as Strix Point in the future. You can watch my previous video where I go into a ton of detail regarding Strix Point and other AMD APUs. But this is basically a separate block on the APU. This is not part of the Zen C uh, 5 CPU cores, of course. From what I'm told and what AMD themselves seem to be hinting at at this slide, Zen 5 CPUs themselves will support improvements baked into the core itself. And this is going to come in the form of new instruction support from what I'm told. So this is going to be 
um, FP16 AVX512 instructions for Zen 5. Getting back to the re-pipeline front end and wider issue, looking at the changes AMD have implemented from Zen 3 to 4, you can get somewhat of an idea of what AMD are likely to do, the low-hanging fruit if you will. Likely we'll see a wider decoder to better match the execution units according to what I'm told, but with all that said, let's get into kind of an overview of all the info that I've been told so far about Zen 5, then I'll go, then I'll go ahead and break down some of the more interesting elements. So IPC gains 20 to 25% according to one source, another source is telling me it's over 25% uh, one T, so that's single thread. Most sources seem to indicate that it's going to be 20 to 25 percent though. Clock speeds are roughly similar to Zen 4, but we are not looking at final production silicon yet, so obviously things can change. CCD counts, well, as I just mentioned, we are looking at eight cores per CCD for the Ryzen CPUs. SMT2 is going to be constant, so there's no SMT4 or anything like that. Big core design only for Ryzen desktop, that's Granite Ridge, but big dot little will be for other things such as, well, Strix Point, as I've just mentioned. Wider decoders, so Zen 4 uses 4 wide. This is at odds with 10 wide execution units for integer, so I have been told that integer performance in particular for Zen 5 gets a big overhaul. There's increases in load and store bandwidth, which is quite likely according to one of my sources. Um, I can't get that confirmed by a second source. There's also general improvements to the logic units, but I can't get specifics. There's new CPU instructions, including the aforementioned FP16 AVX512. L1 caches are larger. Now, this is where I have to go back on myself a little bit, because previously I'd been told that L2 caches are unified across a CCD. A new source is telling me that this is not true, which is actually at odds to what a previous source had told me, and they had given me really good info previously, so I don't know whether this was a change that AMD have just rolled back on, maybe it's for specific units, or perhaps that source was just always feeding misinformation for whatever reason. So, so far, it seems that L2 caches are just larger, but they are not unified across the CCD. Similarly, this new source is telling me that L3 is seeing, seeing numerous changes and enhancements, but it does not seem to be a separate chiplet. Um, previously, I'd likened it to something along the lines of RDNA 3's Infinity Cache, but this does not seem to be the case from what I'm being told thus far. Perhaps it's some variant or another that does sport this, but for Ryzen, no, this does not seem to be the case. According to this new information, of course, as I just mentioned, we're looking at 16 cores, 32 threads. TSMC's 4NM is for the desktop and some other APUs but 3NM for server and slash certain APUs. Obviously, the AM5 platform will continue. AMD themselves have officially confirmed the support for AM5 until the minimum of 2025. And there may be the odd, you know, new thing here or there, but also AMD have officially confirmed that Vcache variants will continue to be released in the future. This is not new information. AMD have basically said that this is going to be a strategy that they're going to continue to employ. I very much hope that the Vcache variants are going to be at launch in future rather than coming that much later because that I find kind of annoying but Hey, there you go. I also want to talk a little bit about Zen 6. Now, I want to stress that this stuff is very early because Zen 5 is going to obviously launch next year and therefore you can guess when Zen 6 is going to come out. But um, I have been fed a tiny bit of info. So basically from what I've been told by a single source, um, Zen 6 is not a ground up redesign like Zen 5 is. Instead, you can more think of it like Zen 3 to Zen 4. Energy efficiency, of course, is gonna be targeted, improvements in frequency, and to use the same term as I did earlier in this video, they're targeting low hanging fruit. So I would say that IPC gains are probably not gonna be, you know, 20%, 25%, 30%, or whatever for Zen 6. I would, of course, I love to be wrong here, um, but I think that AMD are just going to be driving up the clock frequencies. I have no idea, though, when it comes to the configuration of the cores or anything like that. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see whether this is wrong or not. I'm really hoping that, uh, obviously, there is a major redesign because it's always much more interesting. Like, Zen 4 was cool. It's obviously great that we saw high clock frequencies and that type of jazz. But... I always just like to kind of geek out and obviously the more changes from one architecture to the other, 
the more stuff you can talk about. But so far, I don't think Zen 6 is going to be like a major change over Zen 5. I think, again, they're just going to make some changes here or there, focusing on efficiency and improving performance. I also feel that Intel is going to be pretty competitive. I'll wait on discussing Intel stuff specifically, perhaps for a couple of weeks, because I'm trying to verify some information. But um, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I think Intel are going to be doing quite well. Uh, how well they compete with something like, let's say, Arrow Lake, obviously, it's going to be dependent upon the specific application and so on and so on. But so far, I am growing relatively confident that let's say Arrow Lake is going to be pretty interesting. So there you have it guys, I think Zen 5 is going to be a very interesting architecture and it's going to be extremely curious how it compares against Intel's offerings. Before I close out the video though, I did want to give you a small update concerning the RTX 4070. Uh, this is uh, based on the previous video that I put out yesterday uh, where I was discussing the release date for various SKUs and also gave some pricing updates for various graphics cards as well. Now basically videocards.com are claiming that the RTX 4070 is going to be an SRP of uh, 599 US dollars. Now, if you've been watching the channel regularly, you'll know that that's a price point I've mentioned multiple times. I was basically told it was uh, 599 to 649 US dollars was always being considered. At the moment, I'm trying to get a couple of other things uh, nailed down for a couple of other SKUs on the lower end side. So I don't want to mention that in this video. So maybe tomorrow or the day after that, I'll probably put out a video concerning uh, those SKUs, if I can get the information, hopefully I can. Just to repeat myself, and you can close out the video if you know this already, but the 4070 is going to be roughly on par with the 3080, give or take, depending on the game and a lot of other uh, stuff, obviously. Of course, you will get things like DLSS, um, DLSS free. My concern is, though, that the amount of VRAM and so on is not exactly... You know, I think a lot of people are still going to probably want to go for something like an RTX 3080 12 gigabyte card or one of the AMD offerings. I'm very much hopeful that I can get some info on N32, more solid info regarding the release dates and timings of those cards at the moment. I've still been given several different release dates and price targets, so I don't want to say anything at the moment because honestly there's so much conflicting information, it just pretty much cancels each other out. Um, but yeah, I mean, over 700 bucks never made sense to me for the 47 pricing. That's for the 4070 pricing. Jesus, I cannot speak today. I think it's going to be a case of the market just kind of deciding what's going on with the 4070. The 4070 Ti, of course, has sold very well indeed. I very much hope that the next generation of NVIDIA graphics cards, Blackwell does see a big upgrade in terms of the amount of VRAM. Um, but yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see how AMD responds to the pricing of the RTX 4070. Uh, just to repeat what I said in my video yesterday, I was told that the 4060 Ti is going to be about 150 US dollars cheaper. So, you know, call it 450 bucks. Of course, these are A, MSRP prices, so depends on your region. And B, obviously, you're going to get like, you know, the, the super fancy cards which give you a back massage and, you know, hug you at night. And those are obviously going to be much more expensive. Um, but yeah, with any luck at all, um, we'll see some great competition from AMD going forward. It's it's not bad, the 4070's pricing. Like, honestly, it could have been worse. I personally was expecting it to be 650 US dollars because, again, my source told me 599 to 650. So in my head, whenever I'm told that, I was just automatically assume it's the higher-end price. Eh. With that said, take care of yourselves, guys. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.